So we will start with a brief introduction. First of all, thank you very much for joining you know, this webinar program. The webinar today will be conducted by Dr. Surya, Surya Sedu, Sedu Madhavan. I will give an introduction about B site, as well as you can introduce yourself and then I'll introduce Dr. Surya and I'll hand over to him to conduct, conduct the webinar. So today's webinar topic is about stress the silent killer, specifically focused on project professionals. This program is hosted by B-Side Consulting and Training. So as they requested, I'll give an overview about B-Side Consulting and Training, and then we will you know, join or move into the program. So B-Side Consulting and Training is a PMI approved or authorized training partner to conduct various PMI training programs in Qatar. And they are doing the project management training and consulting for many years now. You can visit their website, www.pmi.org for more details. Some of you are alumni of PMI, sorry, uh, B-Site. And maybe some of you for the first time, you're joining with a program with B-Site. So you can visit their website, www.bsite.org to know, know more about B-Site, their activities. And if you are interested to know more about their training programs or activities, please contact them. They will provide you more details. So as I mentioned, this is the ATP, Authorized Training Partner Certification from PMI. They are authorized to provide CAPM, Certified Associate in Project Management, PMP, as well as Agile Certification Programs. These are some of the online training programs conducted by you know, B-Site for PMP, Project Management Professional, Risk Management Professional, Agile Certified Practitioner, PGMP, et cetera. And these are some of the certified uh, professional, recently certi certified professionals through B-Site. Some of you like took the training with us and got your PMP certification as well as RMP or ACP certification through us. And if you look into their Google profile, they are having five-star review from more than 200 training participants or consulting organizations, mainly because of the, you know, way they, how, do, how, do, how they do the training as well as do the consulting program. And as a past alumni of B-Site, many of you know about that. So that's briefly an overview of B site. You can contact them through various channels. You can also visit their social media channels in Facebook as well as LinkedIn to get further announcements about the future, you know, programs. So we will launch a poll and there will be a few questions. Choose which is more appropriate for you. Which industry do you work in as a project professional? 57 percentage of you are from construction industry, construction engineering, 17 percentage from information technology, 20 percentage from oil and gas, and three percentage from manufacturing, three percentage from aviation. What do you think is the most common source of stress in your project management role? 53 percentage of you mentioned about tight deadlines, 10 percentage of you about lack of resources, 17% about team conflicts, 13% about scope changes, 7%, two of you have mentioned others. Can you please type in the chat box, only if you have mentioned about others, what you think is the reason for the stress in your project management rule? Please select everyone when you are typing, so all of us, we can see your result. Only those who have mentioned as others, those two participants, please mention in the chat box. Stress due to overburden of multiple projects, and resource optimization, like program management. You are more than of a program management, right? Thank you. And the other participant, if you want to please mention your reason, you can mention that in the chat box as well. How does stress impact your work performance? It makes me less productive, 27%. It makes me more likely to make mistakes, 40%. It makes me less engaged in my work, 13%. And it has no impact, 20%. What stress management techniques have you tried in the past? Mediation and mindfulness, 17%. Exercise and physical activity, 37%. Time management strategies, 23%. Seeking support from colleagues or mentees, 17%. None yet, 7%. Great. Have you ever had, a, had to take time off 
due to stress related health issues see the result 50 percentage of you yes and other 50 percentage no never okay management's decision which impacts my hygiene life that work life balance is a reason for stress i'm not reading the name as you know this recording will be available in youtube after the session so i don't want to mention any names just to understand about the participants a brief introduction about the presenter today's uh, Expert presenter is Dr. Surya Narayanan. He is holding an MPPS as well as his edit is Masters in Occupational Medicine. He is the Health and Wellness Advisor of Ashkel currently. He is a medical doctor with 23 years of clinical expertise in the field of emergency and trauma care medicine and occupational medicine. He has worked with Shramagar. Qatar Energy, Qatar Foundation, and now he is with Ashkel. He is wor working with Ashkel. Currently, he is heading a team of 45 doctors and 123 nurses in 165 plus in infrastructure projects with nearly 82,000 workers. Dr. Surya will provide more details about the major you know, uh, activities and how these activities are helping 82,000 workers in Ashkel. He is also the core committee member of Qatar's National Health Strategy Group, and he is working closely with MOPH, Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Interior, International Labor Organization, and several government, governmental and private stakeholders in ensuring quality health care for Ashkel's workforce, its contractors, and consultants. In fact, a couple of weeks back when I spoke about this idea to Dr. Surya, he kindly agreed to provide this, you know, uh, overview or an R seminar to B-site alumni and wide project management professionals. First of all, thank you, Dr. Surya, for agreeing, you know, to provide this valuable information. So usually B-site will conduct more of, you know, technical seminars, project management seminars. So last week or two weeks back, we had PMI ACP, Agile Certified Practitioner webinar. And last month we had a webinar about artificial intelligence influence in, you know, project management and project forecast. So this is the first time we are doing a seminar, which is different from project management concepts, but this is very valuable for all project professionals. So thank you, Dr. Surya. And I believe it will be a, uh, a knowledge enrichment session for all of us. And we will be able to implement most of the you know, strategies, what we are learning from Dr. Surya in our day-to-day -day project management life. Uh, Dr. Surya, over to you. Thank you, Angel. Uh, am I audible? Yes, clear. Okay. Good evening, everyone. And it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be with you this uh, evening. Thanks, Angel, for inviting me. In fact, um, it is uh, funny in a way because with you people, most of you with the engineering background, with construction background, a few of you having uh, oil and gas background and someone from the aviation industry. Okay. Let me explain this to you, happiness hypothesis. See, let us assume that you like ice cream, okay? Everyone, almost everyone likes ice cream. There used to be a time when I used to love ice creams. For some reasons, for some strange reasons, I've grown out of ice creams and chocolates. I couldn't live without chocolates. There was a time, but now I've stopped. It's not because I have diabetes or anything. I'm perfectly healthy. No diabetes, no hypertension, cholesterol for me as of yet, but... For some strange reasons, I grew out of ice cream. But let's say that you, you love ice cream. Let's say chocolate ice cream. And whenever you have chocolate ice cream in front of you, when you eat it, you feel so happy, okay? And your favorite brand of ice cream. You take a mouth and two mouths and you just can't put it down. And even in case you're in bad traffic or your wife is angry with you or your boss is not happy with you or whatever happens, when you eat your ice cream, you forget the rest of the world and you feel so happy, okay? This is happiness, true happiness. There are some people say, oh my God, happiness is having this ice cream. Great. But ladies and gentlemen, please remember when the ice cream finishes, so does your happiness. When the ice cream finishes, you feel, oh my God, where is the next tub? Why did it have to end so soon? And then you go back to your normal life again and you say, oh my God, not the boss again. 
oh my God, not the traffic again. And you go back to your normal life. So this is happiness, but it's very temporary happiness. Let's stop this imagination now and let's say that you're in an organization where you're in a very senior position, an engineer, and you say, okay, let me study PhD. Let me do PhD now. And you're doing an online search and you decide, okay, from Harvard, you're going to do your PhD in civil engineering or whatever. And you enroll for the course and you give yourself a chance, a, a, a target that within three years, you have to finish this course. And you work really hard and you have a challenging job. And at the end of three years, you pass out in flying colors. You're a PhD now. Now you're called Dr. Vinayak. You're called Dr. Aziz. You're called Dr. Angel. Okay, you're very, very happy. Great. That gives you happiness, which is longer lasting than the happiness you got from eating the ice cream. You understand what I mean? Which means that your happiness is now there for almost six months, one year, wherever you go, you're talking about it. You, you don't tell them that, no, I'm not uh, angel, I'm Dr. Angel, you know? I'm just giving an example. It could be anyone. You could be Dr. Muhammad. You could be uh, Dr. Aziz. But at the end of the day, this happiness is not as short-lived as your ice cream is, but this is a long-lasting happiness. And you make sure that you tom-tom it to the whole world. You put it on your LinkedIn profile. You put it on your Facebook profile. Profile, you put it everywhere and everyone calls you doctor, doctor, doctor. And this PhD has given you so much of fulfillment that you say, wow, this is happiness. But ladies and gentlemen, after six months or after one year, you start losing happiness in this also because your colleague has also completed his PhD. And the person whom you don't like in the office, he or she has also done the PhD. Oh my God. What to do now? The other person has also done her PhD or his PhD. Now I'm not so happy. Then the happiness starts coming down. Let's cut this imagination right here and go back to another uh, imaginary situation. Let's say that you're from Egypt or you're from India, you're from Philippines, wherever. You live in a beautiful swanky apartment with a tennis court, swimming pool. You have a gym. You love sport, you have a supermarket, you, your wife and kids are very happy in life. But you also have a family home, which is a very dated old house where your kids don't want to go, where your mother lives alone, your father is gone and your mother is alone. But when you go there, you go there for a day's visit. You go in the morning and you come back in the evening because the bathrooms are so dated, dingy. The plumbing is old. The roof is falling down. The gardens are not so good. The kids complain that there are mosquitoes and it's not so swanky. There's no Wi-Fi. In such a house, you would not be happy, right? But you go there because your mom lives there and you want to be happy with her. But try as you might, you can't live there. I'm sure most of you would be uh, identifying with a situation like this. Maybe not exactly this, but something similar to this in your real life. You always think of renovating this house and you say, okay, let me completely raise it down and build a beautiful swanky house for my mom, where in case I go visiting her, my children, myself, my mom, we'll all live in peace together. You have the money, but you've always thought about it, but because you're so busy with your projects and with your work, you've never done that before. But let's say on one fine day, like how you ate the ice cream, like how you decided to do the PhD, you decide, okay, now I'm gonna build the dream house for my mom. And you go ahead, actually you build it. And after you build the house, your mother loves it. She's so happy. She has tears of joy. And your kids love the house. They say, now, wow, I'm going to stay with my grandmom. And they don't hesitate to go for a holiday anymore. Your wife is happy. You're happy. Your spouse is happy. And the villagers seeing this, they come to your house. They throng you and they thank you. They say, all along this house was defunct, it was crumbling, but now thanks to you, this house is beautiful. You understand what I mean? This kind of happiness, ladies and gentlemen, when you're not doing something for you alone, but when you're helping someone else, this project was to help your mom to live a life of dignity. When you do happiness for others, when you eat the ice cream, it disappears in a minute. When you do your PhD, it goes away in six months, but as long as the house is there, as long as your mother is alive, as long as you are alive, as long as the villagers see this beautiful house, this happiness will last forever. 
This is called happiness hypothesis. Why is this relevant? Most of us do things which make us momentarily happy, like buying a lipstick or buying a beautiful dress. I'm giving examples which will be relevant to women also. Uh, don't find it odd because whenever I talk, it is human nature that we always say me and my wife. We don't speak in neutral genders, right? So I'm trying to give you examples which would include men and women in the conversation. Let us say that we are going out and we are shopping for a new dress, or let's say we are buying a new car, or we are eating ice cream, or we are going to the best restaurant in town. All this happiness, ladies and gentlemen, is very fleeting happiness, which gives you momentary happiness. But there is happiness like doing your PhD or doing something or, or giving a lecture or doing a conference, which gives you happiness for a, for a longer time, but doesn't last forever. And there is happiness where you do things for others. I just give you one example. It can be anything. You doing a project for someone else's happiness. You helping your family member. You helping your wife, your spouse. You helping your kids. Or you doing something for your co-worker. Or you helping someone who's not even known to you. You doing charity. These things give you happiness which will last forever. When you are suffering from stress-related problems, as doctors, we see most of the people indulge in intense gratification where they focus on happiness, which is very momentary. So when that stimulus, which gives you happiness, is taken away, your life becomes sad again. Whereas if you start pooling things in your life where happiness is caused by people around you and you are able to contribute to the happiness to others, your happiness will be long lasting. Okay. Next slide, please. This is happiness hypothesis, and this is very relevant to the world that we live in. Okay. See, I have told you why stress is the silent killer, because unlike a condition, let's say you have epilepsy, or you have high blood pressure, or you have high sugar, you can measure it. But can you measure stress? You can't. Which is why stress is called the silent killer, because it enters your body very discreetly and starts breaking down your tissues, your bones. I will tell you exactly what are the biological changes that happen in your body because of excessive stress. And this will shock you and surprise you because what happens is right from the brain to the pituitary, it starts affecting every single part of your body. Obesity. We talk about weight gain. People are super conscious about the way they look these days. Starting from the teenagers, people are hyper finicky about what they eat and how they look. Stress eating and binge eating has been evidence-based medicine proved to be linked to stress. There are people who binge eat and overeat and stress eat because of the stress in their married life, in their sex life, in their work, at home, financial conditions. There are many reasons why obesity is a pandemic these days. Talking about heart disease, many people just pop pills. They say, I have high blood pressure, you take a medicine. But have you paused? Have you thought this hypertension, is it an organic hypertension? Is it because of vasoconstriction? Is it because of the changes in your heart? Or is it purely stress-related high blood pressure? There is cardiomegaly. Cardiomegaly, again, it's a... Cardiomegaly is a medical term, but let me put it in non-medical terms for the engineers out here. When your heart enlarges, it's called cardiomegaly. This can happen because of chronic stress, not acute stress, but mm -hmm. chronic stress can cause heart diseases, including cardiomegaly. Diabetes, I was talking about hypertension. Now, ladies and gentlemen, diabetes is a disease of epidemic proportions. Why is this important? Many people talk about COVID. But the number of people suffering from diabetes are nearly 10 times the people who have died because of COVID. Please remember this stat. Insulin suppression and insulin ins insensitivity. What is this and why is this important? When you have excessive stress in your body, even if you inject insulin, have you, I don't know if you have had uh, exposure to these conversations before. Talk to someone who's taking insulin regularly. You will find out that gradually over a period of time, the dosage of insulin that he or she takes is not effective anymore. Let's say that they take Lantus or whichever variety. It used to be 10 units in the morning, 10 in the afternoon, and 10 in the night. Later, they say, I started with 10, I've gone to 
40 international units. Why the fourfold increase? Stress is a contributing factor because not only does it suppress the insulin that is prepared in your body, it also prevents the islets of Langerhans and the receptor target cells in your body and make them insensitive. Even if you're taking insulin inside your body, it becomes the body becomes insensitive to insulin. This is also caused by stress. Let's talk about depression. Depression is a global disease these days. Earlier, it was a taboo to talk about uh, mental uh, diseases. Now, you just walk into your office or walk in home, wherever, or go to a supermarket. Half of the people have even forgotten to smile. And I'm not exaggerating. You just take a random sample of people around you. Just go tomorrow and see 10 people in your office and see if they are smiling or not. Most people in life have forgotten to smile because everyone is stressed. Everyone is depressed. And smile, ladies and gentlemen, costs nothing. It improves your face value. So even if there is no reason to smile, smile for yourself. Because the first way that you can beat stress is smiling. And when you smile, you smile. And maybe one person in the office of 10 people might start smiling back at you. Okay. Depression, insomnia. I told you how there are people who come and tell me. I'm sure I don't know whether you have it in your family or not. But I, as a doctor, over the last so many years in my practice, I've seen people from all walks of life in different hierarchy don't even think that this is only for certain category of people, even workers who dig trenches for a living, even the workers, right up to the project director, CEOs whom I meet on a regular basis. Insomnia is a global disease. People say, doctor, I go to bed, but I can't sleep for three hours, four hours. Give me something for my sleeping problems. It is so easy to fall into a category of substance abuse or drug abuse for insomnia, but that's not the cure here. Sexual dysfunction, as I briefly mentioned, Male impotence or erectile dysfunction, as they call it, is directly proportional to the stress in your life, which means there, there have been studies conducted in the US where they've given placebo treatments. You know what is a placebo, right? Which means it's not a real drug. You just give someone chalk powder or you give someone some sugar-coated pill, empty pill, and you just tell them, okay, if you take this, you become very strong and, and it will get rid of your sexual dysfunction. And the man actually believes that and he takes it. And they also gave stress buster courses, psychological counseling to these people. Even without taking medications, there was an 80% improvement in their sexual dysfunction. And low self-esteem. Many people can think very bad things about themselves. They can feel so miserable. There might be a few people who might appear very happy in the exterior, but Inside, they would be killing themselves every single minute because of stress, low self-esteem. Hyperacidity and GERD, gastroesophageal reflex disease. This is very, very common. Many people think they are dying of a heart attack when actually it's hyperacidity. This can also be related to stress. When we go to the next slide, I'll explain to you in detail the pathophysiology, how this happens and how you can detect and control these conditions. Next slide, please. Okay, let's have another poll here because I want this to be an interactive program because I don't want to keep on talking and I do not know if you're falling asleep. I want you to at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, have a visual relief from this, which is why we are launching this uh, poll. So uh, Angel, can you launch the poll and let's see that uh, if they can answer this question. Yeah, already launched, doctor. It's okay, great. It is addiction to uh, any substance. You can see the results in your screen as well. Do you believe you have an addiction to any substance that is correct, currently affecting your daily life? 20% of you have mentioned, yes, I believe I have an addiction that impacts my daily life. 25% have mentioned, I'm not sure if I have an addiction, but I have concerns about my substance use. 55% have mentioned, no, I do not believe I have an addiction affecting my daily life. Dr. Surya. Very good. Next slide, please. So almost 45%, let's say that uh, nearly half of our audience have a concern about some substance which is uh, affecting their daily life. It could be something as uh, harmless or less harmless, if you can put it as caffeine, 
or it can be something even more dangerous. But we are not here to discuss individuals here. We are here to discuss the medical issues behind this. When we are talking about the plethora of stress that is affecting us, let me go into the medical details here, because as a doctor, this is what I wanted to tell you. When high blood pressure is caused in any human body, what happens is you're all uh, physics graduates. You're all, most of you are from the engineering background. You understand that when there is a pipe, okay? And water flows into the pipe. Exactly the same way as how blood flows into our system in the arteries and the veins. If you try and decrease the thickness of the pipe, what happens? The pressure of the water increases. It is simple physics, right? Because the pressure increases when the diameter of the pipe decreases. Similarly, in human body, why is the blood pressure of an elderly person higher? And why is the blood pressure of a young person lower? As the age increases, there is a natural age-related condition where the artery's diameter decreases. The arteries start shrinking. This is normal, which is why when they say, what is your normal blood pressure? Many people say 120, 80, and they come to me with panic in their face and they say, doctor, I'm 140, 90. Oh my God, I have high blood pressure. No, 140, 90 is a normal blood pressure for a 40-year-old person. Please do not think it is only 120, 80. Only when it crosses 140, 90, you should be worried. So 120 to 80 is the normal blood pressure of a 20-year-old. Whereas if you're 35 years old, if it is, if the systole is 136 and if your diastole is 88 or 86 or 84, you don't need to worry. But what happens when you have chronic stress? There is a condition when you have chronic stress, it affects the pituitary and there is also an organ called hypothalamus, which is in your brain. The pituitary and hypothalamus releases certain chemicals. Okay, these catecholamines, what it happens is it directly affects your heart where it can have anti-cardiac properties, which means even in a young person of 20 years, your arteries can become as old as an 80-year-old which means the person's biological age could be 26, but his blood pressure, when you say, it would be the systolic, the high blood pressure would be the higher part. I'm just trying to use non-medical terms here because if I said systolic, diastolic, you wouldn't understand. When you represent blood pressure, you represent it as a fraction. There is one number on top and one number on the bottom. Okay, this is systolic and diastolic. The systolic is the blood pressure when the heart contracts and the diastolic is when the heart relaxes. When stress increases tremendously, what happens is your heart contracts, but it does not relax so freely. So your blood pressure is constantly high. Like how you go to the gym and you work out and your muscles feel sore or weak after you work out. Similarly, your heart is always feeling the pain because of the stress. The same thing happens in ischemic heart disease. What happens in ischemic heart disease? When someone has heart attack, how do you know that a person has heart attack? There are certain signs which we doctors call as lab investigations, but there are certain physical signs. You will have severe pain in the left side of your chest. It might be radiating to the left upper limb. It can radiate to your chin. There can be severe excruciating pressure. You can have severe sweating. All the signs and symptoms, ladies and gentlemen, can happen in situations where a person can have stress-induced ischemic heart disease or a sudden cardiac arrest. In some cases, uh, recently I heard of a case where the person was in his uh, late 40s. He had a sudden cardiac arrest because recently, the last few days before his untimely death, he was going through a very stressful period. What happens in these conditions is if the sodium-potassium pump can be altered, there can be release of certain chemicals, as I mentioned, I'm trying deliberately to avoid medical terms, certain catecholamines can be released from the brain, which can have anti-cardiac properties where it completely affects the way your heart pumps. And this can actually, when you take them to a hospital and do an ECG, you would see the T-wave inversion, you would see the ST segment elevation. 
it would look as though the person is really suffering from a heart problem. But when you do the color Doppler or when you do the echocardiogram, you would see the doctor, the cardiologist himself would be surprised that though there are ECG changes, there is no physiological changes in the heart because this is being ca caused by stress. How can you save such cases? Normally, these things are activated by triggers. Triggers means when there is a death of a family member. That is the global number one trigger. When there is a war, when there is social disharmony, when you're a victim of abuse, or let us say you've been assaulted by someone or you assault someone, these are all the major trigger factors, even natural calamities. Many people had mental uh, uh, dysfunction, especially stress-related mental dysfunction during the COVID pandemic because many people lost their jobs. COVID did not just have a biological impact on the world. It also had a mental impact on the world where people are still reeling from it. Though we have come out of lockdown and though we are working, though we are all trying to be normal, the world is not normal in the post-COVID pandemic world. This can also be a cause for depression and anxiety. Stress-induced insomnia. What happens? There is a, uh, you know, the kidneys, right? On top of the kidneys, there's an organ called the adrenal gland. Adrenal releases a hormone called cortisol. When you have excessive stress, what happens is this cortisol increases phenomenally in your blood circulation. And this can cause insomnia, which means you can go to bed, but you would not sleep at all impotence the same way though the blood circulation is fine and the erection does not have any problems there can be situations of impotence where because of stress there would be certain chemicals which would be released which would be diametrically opposite to the way a normal body functions during sexual stimulus muscle spasms aches and pains these are called pseudo muscle spasms where because of excessive uh, stress a person can have severe muscle pain and tightening of the entire body even without anyone affecting your joints or your muscles, which means no one is assaulting you, no one is hurting you, but just because of stress, you can have this. In women especially, menstrual problems and hormonal problems are extremely common. There are situations like dysmenorrhea and, and other situations where excessive blood loss is there and these hormonal problems can be related to thyroid problems. These can be related to other luteinizing hormones problems, luteotrophic hormone problems because of stress. And one of the major causes which I have seen in my practical life, in my day-to-day -day clinical practice is young people come to me, people in their 20s and say, doctor, after coming here, I've started getting a lot of gray hair. I'm having loss of hair and I'm getting gray hair. Many people do not understand that because of excessive stress, okay, norepinephrine is secreted and norepinephrine actually enters the hair follicles. And when it enters the hair follicles, it can have damage to the pigment cells in your hair. Okay. There are certain pigment cells called melanocytes. Melanocytes can be affected. Melanin itself can be affected because of norepinephrine. This is evidence and it has been proved to be a cause for stress. So the next time you're talking about your gray hair or your hair fall, think about stress because stress is not going to come and tell you this is because of me that you're losing your hair. The last thing that I want to talk about is epileptic fit. Many people have epilepsies and epilepsy itself can be because of stress. Okay. How this is combated Okay, I, I, I have a separate slide about, I think I even saw a message about someone said, I'm not so bothered about the diseases, I'm only bothered about the treatment. But when you're talking to a, 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 a bigger community of several professionals here, as a doctor, it is my duty to talk about the various representations of the diseases. Because if I don't talk about epilepsy or premature graying or your muscle spasms or your insomnia or impotence or heart disease, you would only be thinking, okay, stress is causing High blood pressure stress is causing me having a sleeplessness problem, but stress has multiple uh, biological problems and you should know what these conditions are and we will talk individually about the treatment aspects of these, okay? Stress eating and stress smoking, I've, I've briefly covered it where we talked about uh, 
bulimia nervosa where people can eat overeat and they can start throwing up this is also a psychological condition and many people have you seen whether there is a need to smoke or not because they go to office every 10 minutes or 15 minutes you would see them in the smoking room this is called stress smoking it can be because of a job or maybe they don't have anything else to do that they are taxing their body with nicotine next slide please the first answer yes i believe i have i may have a sleep disorder and i often struggle to fall asleep 20% of the participants i'm not sure if i have sleep disorder but i do have difficulty falling asleep sometimes 31% no i don't think i have a sleep disorder 49% yes doctor good the last category is like my wife she goes to bed and she immediately falls asleep that means you have a very good spouse at home <laughs> <laughs> okay but but the good thing is that itself is a gift i feel very happy when my wife sleeps before me because it it's nice to see your your spouse the person whom you love the most uh, sleeping peacefully that's a beautiful thing to see and uh, half of our audience are lucky that way they are lucky like me that uh, they don't have sleep problems they don't have anything but this is the kicker the other half definitely have some sort of a problem we are here to discuss that and we are here to suggest the corrections also don't worry help is always there medical the good thing about medical fraternity is we have solutions for everything certain solutions can be difficult certain solutions can be easy certain solutions can cause addiction but this comes with a disclaimer for each and every treatment okay so most of this i already covered because you know the thing with the slides is unlike an engineering presentation you just can't uh, do it in stages when you talk about blood pressure you have to talk about the pathophysiology so when i spoke about the pathophysiology i also told you how stress causes high blood pressure i also told you how stress causes insomnia because of the release of cortisol from the kidney um i also told you about insulin release from the islets of langerhans and how even after taking insulin your body becomes resistant to insulin because of stress vitamin d let me uh, mention now i was already talking to you in the introduction how vitamin d is very important vitamin d is a, is a very important vitamin which affects your uh, bones it affects your healing it affects your skin it affects your teeth it affects your hair fall it affects your sex life it affects your hormonal imbalance in the body if you have it also causes depression and other conditions if you have deficiency of vitamin d if there is one one message if you forget everything that i talk about today no problem at least remember one carry home message whenever you get a chance to test yourself if you have never tested yourself please test yourself for vitamin d if you are deficient please correct it the treatment is very simple if you're deficient you need to take 60000 international units of vitamin d once a week for at least 4 months and then you see how your life blossoms there are so many problems you might have you might have a thyroid problem you might have a hair fall problem you might have infertility you might not be getting pregnant at all there are several cases in my practice i've seen women who've been going to pregnancy centers they've never had positive uh, pregnancy tests but after correcting their vitamin d even without external support automatically they conceive so vitamin d is a very critical disease ladies and gentlemen which many people overlook but if you look into it you would be surprised this can reverse several of your problems including your depression anxiety and other situations in many cases of depression you don't even need antidepressants but if you correct your vitamin d deficiency automatically your uh, problems would be corrected sexual dysfunction also i spoke about uh sexual dysfunction also i spoke about a condition where people might have even with absolutely no organic defect in their body can have sexual dysfunction because of excessive stress performance anxieties and other things and irregular periods in women which we uh, see very commonly in clinical practice these days remember irregular periods in women is not just a problem which is caused 
related to uh, your ovulation this can have long lasting effects when a lady suffers from irregular periods this can have long lasting effects on her bone health the condition of her hair her body it will all cause a plethora of problems in women including weight gain they would say i'm not even eating properly doctor but i'm putting on lots of weight if you do a hormone profile you would find that luteinizing hormone luteotrophic hormone estrogen progesterone everything is out of the window why again because of excessive stress stress is a very important factor which your endocrinologist also these days forgets it so the next time you have a problem like this when you're talking to the doctor the doctor might forget to ask you have you been stressed off late are you going through a stressful period it can be anything it can be work related stress it can be uh, a dissolution of a marriage it can be the death of a, a family member all these conditions can manifest itself even as irregular periods and secondary infertility there are couples whom i have seen who have tried kids for more than 10 years where the lady has never gotten pregnant but when they just corrected their vitamin d when they started standing in the sun at least for 10 minutes see we live in a country like qatar where sunlight is is so abundant but every time we live in controlled atmosphere our bathrooms are air conditioned our kitchens are air conditioned our offices are air conditioned our cars are air conditioned even when we go to a supermarket we we if 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 it's possible we would even take a car inside the supermarket that's how i see people parking their cars right on the outs uh, uh, you know the door of the supermarket and they honk their uh, horn so that the person can come running out with their uh, milk bottles what i'm trying to tell you here though it is not directly related to stress it it will help you in countering your stress try and take at least 5 minutes of sunlight every day and see how your life changes sun therapy is very important because the only source of naturally occurring vitamin d comes from sunlight many people cover themselves even when they stand in the sun they cover themselves with sunblock they wear goggles they cover themselves with clothes and then they stand in sun that's not going to help you ladies and gentlemen at least 5 minutes a day stand in your balcony get maximum sunlight try to be as less clothed as possible try to wear modest clothing and try and stand why is this important because the only way sunlight enters your body is through your skin and as it enters it enters as pro vitamin d it goes into your liver it is converted into vitamin d but please be mindful of your neighbors don't say dr surya asked me to stand in the buff in the balcony and don't get yourself into trouble what i'm trying to tell you here is sunlight is very very important and this can combat stress this can combat vitamin d deficiency next slide please i know we are running out of time i'll try and wrap it up as quickly as possible if you ask me okay doctor all this is understood but what is the actual cause why does stress cause so many diseases you should understand that if you put all our neurons together you can actually go to the moon and come back that's how many neurons are there in the human body billions of neurons neurons are nothing but nerve cells when a nerve cell ends and another nerve cell is touching it at the end of a nerve cell and the beginning of another nerve cell you have something called a synapse in this area where there is a synapse when there is excessive stress what happens is neuropeptides are released in very high quantity by the body when we when we are stressed like how you get a headache when you are stressed or when you are sweating when you are stressed these neuropeptides can completely arrange the synapses in disarray and because of that the chemicals released can alter the target organ in a different way let's say that you have a heart problem stress can affect your heart because of the synapse in a different way whereas if it's your reproductive organ or if it's your thyroid or if it's your pituitary it can affect it in a different way the basic problem happens to be by the nerve hyperexcitability which is why this is important because when you are talking about the treatment you would understand that the only way you can combat stress is controlling your central nervous system once your nervous system is under control stress can be uh, controlled next slide please okay i saw some messages i haven't gone through all your messages yet but some messages saying i'm not i i really need to know how to control stress okay 
that happens only with you. If you come to me as a doctor, I can give you medications. I can give you medications to make you sleep better. I can give you medications to, to improve your sex life. I can give you medications which will decrease your blood pressure. I can give you medications to decrease your hair fall. But that is not the topic for today. The topic for today is how can you stop stress? See, whether you go to your office and whether you stress yourself and smoke 20 cigarettes or you choose not to get stressed by the people who are giving you stress, it is in your hand, okay? How can you do that when you stop stressing and start living your stress levels and the way it causes diseases in your body will start coming down? How? Let me explain. If you start playing a sport regularly, when I say regularly, it has to be every single day. Don't tell me you go for a walk in the Cornish with your wife once in a month and expect your stress to be down. No. It has to be every single day because when you practice something every single day, your body retains a graphic imprint of that. If you play sport at least 30 minutes every day, it can be anything. It can be swimming. It can be running. It can be jogging. It can be you going to the gym and doing your weight press. All that is welcome, but it has to be regular at least 30 minutes a day. If you do that, it has been proved by evidence-based medicine, by experiments, that stress levels come down, cortisol levels come down, norepinephrine level comes down, and the good hormones, the happy hormones in your body keep increasing, okay? Always remember, when you have many, many friends, your stress levels are always high. On the contrary, I'm not telling you not to have many, many friends, but I'm saying have meaningful friends, even if they are few. Let us say if you have 10 friends, who would do anything for you and who really love you, who dote you, who have your back. That is any day better than having 200 friends on your Facebook and who wouldn't even bother if you had a problem, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you here is stress can be decreased by meaningful friends. One of the major things which, again, they have proved by evidence-based medicine is meditation, prayer, and travel. If you are religious, if you really want to pray five times a day, and if you are a person who has your own communication with the Supreme, that is one of the best stress busters known to mankind. So please pray every day. That would definitely make a big difference in your life. Even in case you are not the praying types, if you say, okay, you want to meditate, if you can talk to yourself. Some people say, me time. That is very important especially for the women, when they do so much for their families, when they do so much for their husbands and kids, at the end of the day, they say that I don't have time for me at all. I have seen many women coming to my office and telling me this. That is because it's, it's really sad that we don't realize that like how everyone needs me time, they also need me time. That is called meditation. Meditation is not a religious word. It's not something... You have to sit and you'll have, there has to be smoke and there has to be certain chants in the background. Even if you sit in isolation on a bench in the beach and if it's your me time, if you're just looking at the waves, that is also meditation. Why is this important in today's topic? By having this me time, by spending just 10 minutes with yourself and not stressing, automatically these diseases that I talked about, let's just say you're having high blood pressure. You're taking a medicine. Let's say you're taking Cardase 1.25. Every day you're taking Cardase. You're checking your blood pressure. But do a scientific experiment from tomorrow. Start meditating 15 minutes a day. It can be meditation in your house where you're sitting in a lotus position or just going to the Aspire Park and just sitting in front of a fountain or seeing the birds fly or just sitting in a beautiful park next to your house and just looking at nature, looking at flowers around you. That is also meditation. Do it for seven days and take the same tablet and check your blood pressure. One week without this, one week with this, and you would be surprised. I take a challenge. The one week that you're doing medication, meditation with medication, your blood pressure will be much more lesser. Okay, next slide, please. All these, again, ladies and gentlemen, are told based on evidence. These are not just random words which I'm talking about. Let me very quickly tell you before we wrap up, stress itself is not bad. For a student, 
the preparation for an exam is a positive stress. You know, there are some people who feel really stressed before an exam. They are usually the people who top the class. You need to be stressed before a presentation. You need to be stressed before a marriage. You need to be stressed before a holiday. Not excessively, in a very mild way. That way you would know that all your travel documents are there, that you have all your reservations done in the hotels and you have planned for everything. Your car is waiting for you in the airport. These are all positive stress. Tolerable stress is stress from spouse and kids. Okay. Um, tolerable stress is when you have traffic and when you have health problems, financial problems. These days, many people are having financial problems. That is tolerable. Toxic is when there's a death in the family, family, when you lose a very close person, when you have difficult situations at work, when you have very toxic people uh, dealing with you on a daily basis. This can all be very toxic stress. Let's go to the next slide, which will tell you how to deal with each of these. Okay, you have another poll here, is it? Okay, that's, a, Let's that's last, the poll. last poll of the day. So quickly, okay. please respond to this poll. 13% of you mentioned, yes, I believe I may need expert advice. 39% of you mentioned, I'm not sure if I need expert advice yet. 47% mentioned, no, I don't think I need expert advice. Yes, doctor. Again, if you see, we are split right down the middle. Next slide, please. Almost 50% of the people are saying that uh, a third of them are saying that they need expert advice. Two thirds of them are saying that we do not know. I think I need ex expert advice, which is 50% of the audience attending today, which shows that stress is something that you cannot overlook. Okay. Now, how can you detect and treat it? First, discuss with your family physician. In case you come to me and I'm your first point of contact, tell them, the doctor, I have high blood pressure, but don't blindly take the advice of the doctor and start taking pills. Tell them, how do I know this blood pressure is not because of stress, because I'm going through a divorce right now. What in case this divorce is causing me to have high blood pressure? Ask your doctor this question. Or let us say there was a family, there was a death in the family, and I'm very affected by the death of my family member. How do you know this blood pressure is not because of that and because of this? These are questions which the patient should ask the doctor. I am surprised. I've been a doctor for 23 years now. I am surprised there are many times that people come from very high levels of education, PhD holders, directors of organizations. I've spoken to CEOs who are so eloquent in their boardrooms, but when it comes to a medical consult, their lips are sealed. Whatever the doctor gives them, he blindly takes it and he pops it. No. It is imperative on you to ask the question to the doctor and to give the history to the doctor that you have a doubt because you are the only person who would know that if you're stressed or not. You should ask the question to the doctor and ask them, maybe because of stress I'm manifesting this disease. Don't live in denial. Most of the people who suffer from chronic stress are people who deny that they have a problem. In Ashkal, you know what we did? There is a mental wellness questionnaire. I didn't want to share it as, as part of my presentation today, but, but you can always get it if you, if you do an online search or whatever, or, or some of you might already be from Ashkal Projects. You can, you can already have access to it. But this is based on the American Psychiatry Association, a beautiful questionnaire. But again, it's a self-questionnaire. You can sit with that questionnaire, just yes and no answers. There are some 60 answers talking about so many things. It talks about your sleep patterns. It talks about your substance abuse. It talks about your drinking, your smoking. It talks about your sex life. It talks about your work. It talks about suicidal tendencies. All these questions, you just need to say yes or a no, yes or a no, yes or a no. As, a, as a Angel was uh, mentioning in his introduction, Last year, when we had 163 projects, our peak man force was 82,000 workers. Of course, now it has come down to 55,000. But still, 55,000 is not a small number. It's a huge number. We screened every single person in Ashkal projects for mental wellness questionnaire. When we did that, you would be surprised. Even amongst the workers, we found people suffering from chronic mental wellness problems. How we help them 
we refer them to a confidential one-on-one -on -one consultation with Hamad Psychiatry Institute. There is a Hamad Psychiatry Institute very close to uh, Jada Bridge on Beering Road, where the hospital is owned by HMC. It is an exclusive hospital only for mental wellness. And during the pandemic, we even helped them get an online consultation. Your confidentiality is completely maintained. No one in your organization would know that you're suffering from let's say, insomnia or sexual dysfunction, or if you're suffering from depression or any of the anxiety problems, everything is taken, documented. The details are completely confidential. Your colleague or your manager will not know what you're suffering from, but the medications would be given. And individual medication was given to these people. We helped this for nearly 82,000 workers were screened. And out of them, we found 6,000 workers had some chronic diseases. And we gave individual treatment plan for the 6,000 plus workers. Many of them did not even know that they were suffering from these problems. And some of them were suffering from mental wellness problems also. What were the treatment options? We gave them psychological counseling. Sometimes self-help is the only help. What are the symptoms caused by stress? Uh, I think the person joined late or maybe they missed it. But Normally, when there are symptoms, just when you're talking about stress, stress, stress alone, pe people can be irritable, they can have a lot of temper tantrums, people can be lazy, they can have sleeping problems, they can have high blood pressure. All these things, the, the, the biological uh, uh, plethora of things that I told you, the conditions are all symptoms. They can have sexual dysfunction, they can have hair fall, they can have bad skin, they can have bad teeth. So all of us can, can be potential stressed victims. But when you sit and ask yourself and when you go through the questionnaire, when you fall into, at the end of, it's a self-scoring questionnaire, at the end of it, you would know whether you're in the green box or you're in the orange box or you're in the red box. If you're in the red box, you automatically need to take medical treatment, but we will not force the treatment on anyone. We set up a consultation with a psychiatrist, a licensed psychiatrist in, in the country. And you can go and meet them in HMC and talk to them and they would give you treatment. If you're in the orange box, it means like you're a cat on the wall. You can either need medical advice or you don't need medical advice. If you're in the green like you or me, then you don't need to worry about. But self-help is very important. Positive thinking. Always remember, whatever happens, be positive. Yoga and meditation. Many people have come and told me, even people who are Western expats, that after they joined, uh, one lady in particular told me she lives in the Pearl. She said her blood pressure used to be consistently high and she was on medication. But after she joined a yoga studio in the Pearl, she used to come back. I was surprised. I thought maybe she's silently cheating and taking some other medications. But she said, it is again, the patient's words that yoga helped her a lot in decreasing uh, blood pressure. Sports, as I told you, for me, whenever I feel stressed, I'm a tennis buff. When I play tennis, I always feel better. For me, tennis is my stress release. It could be swimming for you. It could be cricket for someone. Try and do team sports or individual sports. Sports has been proven to decrease your stress. Medical treatment, yes. If everything fails, come to us. We would be trigger happy to give you a list of disease, a list of medications, not diseases. I'm sorry. When we uh, give these medications, definitely stress will come down because it will help you to sleep. But again, you are opening up a Pandora's box where you are trading one problem with another, where you are making yourself addicted to a medication. So if you try all the other treatment aspects, if nothing else works, then medication will be the last option. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the last slide. Stress is a biological response to your body crying for help. It could be positive stress, it could be tolerable, or it could be toxic stress. But if it is toxic stress, it will cause multiple diseases in the body, and people have died because of stress. By controlling stress, you can control all these diseases. Seek medical help if all the other self-help and yoga and meditation and sports, all this doesn't help you. If you call 16000, in the Corona helpline, option three or four, I remember, is please press option three. First, you have to choose Arabic and English. Then you choose option three or four. There is a helpline for mental wellness in Qatar. Many people do not know that. It's a free helpline. 
It will connect you automatically to a psychiatrist and you can get an online consultation where it could be through Zoom or whatever they use through their Cerner application. You can have a consultation with a psychiatrist and you can explain whatever your problems are. It will be 100% confidential and all you need to do is just give your HMC card number and your QID number. Okay, so please take medical help when needed because you refusing to accept that you have a problem is the first and the most important factor in combating stress. I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation of mine. As I told you, it would definitely be a long topic where you can talk about multiple uh, conditions and treatments as such, because I can actually talk about depression itself for three hours and treatment. Let us say anxiety or insomnia. As doctors, we have so many things to say but I tried to squeeze in as much as information as possible to a non-medical audience. I hope you liked it. Any other slides? Can you just check, Angel? Or is this the last one? That's it. Any questions, uh, feel free to ask me. If thank you. Want you. To, uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, if anybody want to ask a question, either you can type in the chat box or you have a raise hand option in Zoom. Raise your hand. We will ask you to unmute and ask your question directly to Dr. Surya. I'm sorry, we overshot the time. Maybe you can close the slides, uh, Angel. Yeah, so probably yeah. like we'll keep at the summary level. So uh, Mr. Syed is yeah. having a question. How many vitamin D are used needed weekly? Yeah, it depends on your values. Let's say that you're deficient for a healthy male. If you are deficient, let's say it's, I, I know people whose level is like three or four and all, they can be in severe depression in such situations. 60,000 international units is the prescribed dosage and it has to be taken at least for 16 weeks, for four months. But let's say like you're a cat on the wall, it's like 30 international uh, units. Then uh, 60,000 international units for three months should suffice. But remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It's not a water-soluble vitamin. So if you take vitamin B complex or vitamin C, as much as you want, you can take it. But vitamin D, vitamin A, vitamin K, all these should be taken with caution. So you should take for three to four months, maximum six months, and then you need to retest yourself. If your lab test is bad, then you need to restart the medications. Next question. Okay, so there is a direct question. What is the unit to measure stress level? There's no unit to measure stress level. There is a unit to measure physical stress level. Maybe it's asked by an engineer that physical stress per unit is different from the biological stress. If okay. we all had that, we would have that instrument connected to our body. We can say, okay, Dr. Surya's stress is 1,000 and angel stress is whatever, but it's not like that. You can't measure uh, stress. The stress that you're talking about to measure unit stress is the physical stress, not the emotional stress that we are talking about today. Okay. Next question. Great. So wearing sunglasses affects receiving vitamin D to body? Definitely, yes. They have uh, proved it. Uh, the only way vitamin D enters our body is through contact with naked skin, naked eye, naked forehead, naked legs, naked hands, naked body, which was the concept of introducing the nude beaches. I'm not... I'm not advising that you should go to a nude beach. Don't get me wrong. What I'm trying to tell you here is when you wear less clothes, the sunlight falls on your skin and your vitamin D increases. But more and more you cover yourself, including your eyes with sunglasses. Vitamin D has been proved by experimental studies that your vitamin D reception by the body decreases because it falls into your skin and it is taken to the liver where it is converted into active form. Otherwise, it's in a proactive form. It's not uh, beneficial for the body. I'm not against sunglasses. Even I wear sunglasses. But at least when you stand in the sunlight five minutes a day, that's what I told you. Early morning sun is beautiful. Try to get up early in the morning. Let's say you wake up at six. From tomorrow, just wake up 10 minutes early for my sake. Remember that Dr. Surya told you to wake up at 5.50. Go to your balcony, stand without your sunglasses, just remove your t-shirt, maybe wear your boxers and look at the sun and just take in as much sunlight as possible. Watch yourself after one month. You will personally come and thank me. I can take a challenge. Okay, thank you. 
right as it is like already almost 825 we'll take the last question it's a direct question again uh, okay so i'm type 2 diabetic and my regular levels are around 180 to 230 on tablets but my last week visit to the doctor i got 102 random blood sugar I was happy for seeing that value in my 7 to 8 years of medication. But do I need to worry about it because of the sudden change? Okay. Uh, I told you I won't take personal questions, but because your name is same as mine, I'll give you an exemption. Your name is also Surya. I don't know who this person is. Mm. A random blood sugar of 102 does not mean anything. Okay. Random blood sugar readings can be highly misleading. So the next time you go to a doctor, tell them specifically that my doctor told not to do RBS, but he asked me to do an FBS. If you do an RBS, Surya, it is completely counterproductive because let us say that I have two scoops of ice cream and I go and do an RBS, my blood sugar would be 450. Does it mean I have diabetes? No, I don't. So please don't waste your blood and don't waste your time and your money by doing an RBS. If you do an FBS and if the FBS is 103, you don't need to worry at all. Second thing, there is something called HbA1c. If your HbA1c is less than 6, you don't need to worry at all. Someone said, how many minutes should I be exposed to sun? At least 5 to 10 minutes. This is what they say, early morning sun. In case you miss the early morning sun, at least in the evening, at least in the afternoon, just take in sun as much as possible. If it's very harsh sunlight, 5 minutes would suffice. I don't want you to be suffering from, uh, from heat stress. Right. So, you know, as, can we as, it is, as it is time, we can wrap up. We'll move to the last part. Like uh, those who are PMI certified, you can go to, you know, PMI's website, ccrs.pmi.org, and you can claim for one PDU. Uh, I will show you briefly how to, you know, then we'll go to the final, you know, uh, cl closing session. Doctor, is that okay? We'll take one minute. You sure, sure, sure. No worries. Yeah, so hope you are able to see my screen. Go to ccrs.pmi.org and log in with your username and password. Go to PDUs and go to report PDUs. You will, uh, it will take you to the screen and ask you to for the category. Go to education, course or training. And very important, you have to provide the feedback. So I have pasted the link for the a feedback form in the chat box. Using that, please provide the feedback. So in case PMI is asking us for proof, we will be sharing this feedback form. Provider name, just type B site. You will see our name as we are an authorized training partner of you know, PMI. And of course, you can mention about the uh, stress, uh, the, the stress, the silent killer webinar description. You can go to the, you know, meeting information, the email, what you received, and you can copy the webinar highlights and you can paste there and start date, end date, today's date. Other details are available. So depends on the number of certifications you are having. If you are having only PMP, type 0.5 for ways of working, for 0.25 for business acumen, and 0.25 for power skills, that will lead to one PDU. If you have RMP or other certifications, power skills and business acumen will be directly you know, taken from PMP. So in RMP also, or other certification, what you have, you can mention 0.5, and that will give you one PDU for the other certification as well, right? So due to time, we are not able to take, you know, all the questions. So we'll move to the last part about uh, closing. First of all, thank you, Dr. Surya, uh, for taking your precious time. And, you know, for like 1.5 hours, you are given a detailed, uh, explanation about how to identify stress. And sometimes we may not know that we are stressed, but based on the information what you provided, I'm sure like all of us, including me, we now know how to identify stress. And if we are having stress, how to do? See, I mean, as Dr. Surya mentioned, people have died due to stress. So I have personally seen in some projects, like due to stress, they are actually getting sick or dying. But what happens to the project? Nothing. It continues. But the loss is for our family. So it's very important to take care about, about ourselves. I believe all of us, we have learned a lot from Dr. Surya. And thank you, Dr. Surya, as well as for the thank participants. You. Thank, you. For, thank you for accepting uh, welcome our, our invitation and joining the program. So we are starting our new training program soon, PMP day after tomorrow, RMP end of this month, ACP next month. If any of you are interested to join our training program, please get in touch with B-Side team. They will guide you about that. 
remaining steps. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arun. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good section, sir. Thank you. We could have learned something lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.